up, everybody? Welcome to episode 103 of the Tatiana Harness Podcast. Today, I'm going to be going over a variety of things. I'm really excited. I've got a lot of information for you guys today. I'm going to be going over, um, first off, I'm going to start off with like some of the player of the year contentions in women's college basketball. So that's going to be fun and exciting. And then I'm also going to be going over some of the amazing games that we had going on this week and a couple of upsets. And then I'm going to talk to you guys about like some of the leading scores in women's college basketball, the top 10. And then I'm also going to go over a WNBA mock draft because the WNBA draft is going to be coming up soon. So I personalized my own first round mock draft and I'm going to share it with you guys today. So I'm really excited. I know um, I have had a lot of people ask me about my high school season and how it's been going. It's been going really well. We just got back from a very big tournament that was about three and a half, four hours away. Really high up in elevation, actually. I was like 7,500 something feet. And so that was pretty crazy. And it was freezing cold up there. But team overall did well. We learned a lot and we definitely got better. My next game's on this week on Tuesday, and so I'm really excited. A pretty quick turnaround, but, um, you know, I'm taking today a little bit easy, but then again, still doing a podcast with you guys, getting prepared for another hectic and hectic week and getting better. So, all right, now I'm going to go over some of the player of the year contentions in my opinion. And then after this, we actually have some pretty big news going on in the sports world. But first, player of the year. So there are a couple of contentions. Number one is Aaliyah Boston. Obviously, she plays for South Carolina. Star player. But this year, she isn't doing... Her averages have gone down compared to last year. I mean, yes, she's still averaging a double-double. She's averaging like 12 points per game and like 10 or 11 rebounds per game. But... Compared to some others, that's not very much. And so, Olea Bossa, she's still up there, and she's probably, like, one the number one contention right now. But I think that there are some others that are neck-to-neck neck with her, one of those being Caitlin Clark, who has been doing outstanding this year so far. She's averaging, like, 27.7 points per game. So she's been really impressive, and she's leading Iowa to multiple wins, uh, one including over Iowa State that I'm going to go over later. But Kaylin Clark has been aggressive. Obviously, she's a guard. I'm sorry. I meant to say impressive, not aggressive. But it's hard because these are like the top two contentions, but it's really hard to compare these two because Aaliyah Boston is like a forward slash center, and she gets the ball in the post, and that's when she scores. And then with Kaylin Clark, she's obviously a guard, and she always has the ball in her hands, so she's like tempted to score more. So it's tough to compare these two, but they're neck and neck. If I were to choose one over the other right now, I would probably choose Caitlin Clark if it were to happen today. Obviously, there's still a little bit of time left, so we'll see how these two do in the next couple of games. But right now, I have Caitlin Clark ahead for Player of the Year. Some other uh, contenders are Angel Reese. She has been super impressive this year. She's averaging... Let me turn the page real fast. 23 points per game, and I know she's up there at, like, 14 rebounds per game. She has been amazing for LSU. She's had a breakout season, and keep in mind, she's only a sophomore, so she's still got two more years after this. She's going to be amazing, and so Angel Reese is definitely up there, and lastly is Azzy Fudd. She's, uh, she's could be considered right now number two, but unfortunately, she just got injured, and she's going to be out for three to six weeks. So that's definitely not going to help her. Um, she has been, uh, in the first couple of games for UConn, she's been really, she's been a huge help for them, and she's shown a lot. And she's also um, a sophomore this year, similar. She is the same. Oh, my goodness, I cannot talk right now. Azifud is also a sophomore, so this is only her second year. We all know she's going to be really impressive for the two years after this as well. So she's definitely going to be a contention for player of the year the next two years. Um, but I think with her getting hurt, it's going to be tough for her to remain in the player of the year conversation. All right, so that's the player of the year right now. I take Caitlin Clark. Number two option would be Aaliyah Boston. Then if Azzy Fudd was healthy, she would definitely be number two or three. 
Um, but since she's not, I think she's definitely going to drop. So I'm going to take Angel Reese as number three, and then Azzy is number four as of right now. All right, so now we're going to move on to some of the games. I know last week I previewed some of them to you guys as well. So I'm going to um, go over like some of the scores. Majority of them are like ranked teams that played either close games or upsets. And then if they're not ranked, which I don't know. Do I have any of those games in here? Um, no, I don't. So every uh, team's ranked that I'm going to go over. So on Wednesday, December 7th, we had number 10, Iowa State, play against number 16, Iowa. So obviously this is a battle for Iowa, but both of these teams are really impressive. Obviously, Iowa State has Ashley Jones, Ashley Jones, and then uh, number 16, Iowa, has Caitlin Clark. Iowa pulled off the win 70-57. to Nobody was expecting them to win by double digits, to be honest, and neither was I. I thought it was going to be like a five to six point game obviously uh Iowa played really well they shot the ball well as well they shot 42 percent from regular field goal and then 45 percent from three so they shot the ball impressively Kayla Clark was uh their leading performer she had 19 points eight rebounds eight assists and five steals so she had an impressive game as well as Monica Shizano who had 18 points and 10 rebounds for Iowa State, they did not shoot the three ball well. They only shot 33%, and then field goal percentage was 36 So, I mean, I think it would have been a closer game if they would have definitely made some more shots. They took a lot of shots, so um, i just say execution. But Ashley Jones had a 15.7 rebounds. Uh, e. Ryan had 15 points and five rebounds, and those were their two leading scorers, so... Definitely think that uh need to become all right. So on Thursday, December eighth, we had number four, number four Indiana playing against Penn State. Reason I wrote this down, this game down is because Indiana only won by nine, sixty seven to fifty eight. So I was impressed by this game and how Penn State played. Um, Penn State could have won this game to be honest, but they only shot the ball eighteen percent from the three point field goal. Or from the three point line. It's so I'd say if they were to get that percentage up to like forty, forty five percent, they would have definitely kept it close. They just missed so many good shots. But Indiana shot the ball well, fifty two percent for field goal. Uh Indiana, their leading scorers were M Holmes, who had eighteen points and ten rebounds, and then Sydney Parrish, who had eighteen points and seven rebounds. So they were impressive. For Penn State, uh Capitas, Capitas, I think is how you say your name. It had 15 points and eight rebounds, and then Marissa M. Marissa had 12 points and seven rebounds. So overall, um, I wrote this team down because Penn State has been impressive this year. I could see them sneaking in to the bottom of the rankings somewhat soon in this year. Another game on Thursday. We have a, these next couple games are. On Thursday, we had number six, UConn, play against Princeton, in which this was the game where Azzy did not play, so it ended up being a really close game. Um, UConn did end up winning by five, 69 to 64, but it was really, really close. Princeton was super close to beating them. Um, Princeton shot 33% for field goals and then 28% for the three point line. I think that if they were to brought the percentage up just a little bit, they definitely would have won this game. But UConn shot very impressive, 59% from field goal and 50% from three, which I feel like that's how UConn always is, but, you know, they were impressive. But the main talk of this game was Aubrey Griffin, in which I couldn't think of her name last time when I was talking, but this is who I was talking about. Aubrey Griffin has been super impressive. She ended up with 29 points and 10 rebounds, so she definitely led UConn, and the crazy thing is she was 11 for 11 in her field goals, and so... I'm pretty sure I saw a stat saying, like, nobody has uh, gone, like, uh, over a perfect score, a perfect shooting percentage, uh, like, more than 10 shots outside of, like, Don Staley back in the day. And so um, she was super, super impressive, and I just found this really cool. It was all over the Internet, so I thought that was pretty neat. Another leading score for that was L Lopez and then S. Uh, she had 18 points and six rebounds, so she played well. And then for Princeton, they had two uh, outstanding performers. G Stone had 20 points 
And she shot the three ball well. She thought she made five threes. So obviously, 15 of her 20 points were three pointers. And then Caitlin Chen, my uh, one of my friends, she played super well. She had 18 points and seven assists. She directs the floor so well. She's super impressive. She always has been. But that ended up being a close game. Um, UConn is going to have to... Uh, I mean, and also Nika, uh, Nika, Nika Mule got hurt in this game as well. So they're missing some, a lot of players right now. So we'll see how they handle it in the upcoming game this week. All right, so... Next, we have number 12, Arizona, who played against unranked Kansas. And Kansas beat Arizona by 27. It was not even close. Arizona did not shoot well, 30% for field goal and 19% from the three-point line, while Kansas shot 46% for field goal and 30% from three. So decent, but way better than Arizona. Arizona, their leading performers were Kate Reese, uh, who had 14 points and 8 rebounds, and then Jay Loville, who had 13 points. Outside of that, nobody else really scored very much, so that was a struggle for them. And then for Kansas, T. Jackson had 19 points and 15 rebounds, so she was super impressive, as well as C. Prater, who had 19 points and 7 rebounds. So Kansas is up there for sure. I'm pretty sure they're 8-0 right now. I could definitely see them being ranked in this next upcoming AP poll that that comes out. They're going to be ranked. They've been really impressive this year. All right, next game we go to uh, number 14, Michigan, playing against unranked Toledo. And Toledo pulled off the win by three, 71 to 68. And which, by the way, with Michigan, nobody expected them to be this good this year. But um, they've been performing pretty well so far. But, obviously, Toledo pulled off a big upset. Toledo shot the ball insanely well. 50% for a field goal and then 46% from three. So, very consistent all around. And for Michigan, they shot 40% from field goal and 25% from three. So, Michigan's leading scorers were El Leila Filia, who had 20 points and 8 rebounds. Which, I oh, every time I talk about her, I mention that I'm a huge fan of her. And then... Uh, Kaiser, who's been very impressive for Michigan this year, only had 15 points and 8 rebounds, which is, yes, yeah, still pretty good, but uh, for them to get that win, I think they needed her to do a little bit more. For Toledo, they had, I think it was like 5 or 6 players in double digits, so there wasn't anybody that specifically stood out. But their leading scores was S. Wired, who had 15 points, and then Ed Garcia, who had 14 points and 7 rebounds, but... What a win for Toledo. I mean, I think they have a pretty decent record. I thought last time I checked, they were like 6-2 and two or 7-2, and two, something like that. So they've been performing well. They're an interesting, interesting team. All right, uh, last last game for Thursday, uh, December 8th, we had number 20, Maryland, play against unranked Purdue, and Purdue kept it super close. Maryland ended up winning by three, only 77-74. to 74. Maryland shot the ball well, 55% for field goals, 35% from three. And then Purdue uh, shot 41% for field goals, 40% from three. So consistent all around. Purdue is a very good team overall. I think Maryland is just sometimes a bit uh, inconsistent, um, which is something that has been said about them before. So, uh, But Purdue is very consistent overall as a team. They've been performing um, pretty well throughout the year. So we'll see how far they can make it if they qualify for the NCAA tournament coming up in March. But anyways, back to the game. Uh, the leading performers for Maryland was A. Myers, who had 19 points off the bench. So that was a big spark for them. And then Diamond Miller, who had 18.6 rebounds and 5 assists, which Diamond has been... Uh, I need to find another word other than outstanding. She has been a brilliant, there we go, a brilliant um, for Maryland this year. For Purdue, Abby Ellis had 18 points off the bench, which she should be a starter, but I feel like they bring her off the bench for more energy as almost like a six-man because if she were to start, she would definitely score more, but I think that they want that energy off the bench because she's always their leading scorer. So um, Abby Ellis had 18 points off the bench, and then El Patri had 14 points in total. All right, then we go on to some games from yesterday. We only have two written down, but we had number 18, Creighton, play against unranked Drake, which I was talking about Drake last week. Um, 
But Creighton pulled off the win only by four points, 75-71. to 71. This was a close game. Creighton shot 40% from field goal, 46% from three. So they shot the three ball well. Trey shot 49% from field goal, 36% from three. They could have shot the ball a little bit better from three-point line. Drake could have won this game. Um, but for Drake, Ed Byr had an outstanding performance. She shot, she had 26 points and 11 rebounds, so she was brilliant. And then um, outside of that, it was just G. Berg who had 13 points, and then that was about it. For Creighton, uh, M. Molly had 24 points and six rebounds. Very impressive. And then... E. Ronciek had 19 points. Um, then we move on to the la- uh, the last game I have written down. Number 24, Kansas State, played against Ka- the South Dakota State. Excuse me. South Dakota State. South Dakota State pulled off the upset by 4, 82-78. Unfortunately, now that Kansas State is ranked, they've lost two games, and so I don't think they're going to be ranked anymore. I feel like they might the pressure might have been a little bit too big for them. Um, which is very unfortunate because they were playing so well. And then, of course, they just lost the, these two games and being ranked. But uh, Kansas State didn't shoot well this game, 36% for field goal line and 21% from three. While South Dakota State shot excellent, 51% for field goal line and then 35% from three. Um, but for Kansas State, Gabby Gregory, who has been um, very consistent overall, had 31 points and 6 rebounds, although she did go 2 for 12 from 3-point line. So if she could have gotten that to like 4 or 5 from 12, definitely would have won that game because she had she took some big shots down the stretch. But um, then S. Sundell had 15 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. She played well. For South Dakota State, um, everybody really played well on this team, but M. Selland had 20 points and 5 rebounds. And P. Burkhardt had 13 points and 7 rebounds. So lots of rebounding for them. Those were some impressive games for the week. I'm now going to go over, um, as you guys already know and could probably guess, some amazing games coming up this week. So right now, uh, actually, I'm going to pull it up to see if the games are over already. Because I wrote down some stats a little bit ago. Um, and... I, I'm sorry, I took these notes a little bit ago, and... Da, da, da. Give me one second, you guys, I'm getting there. Okay, so right now, some games that are going on today. Uh, the main game of basically the week is number 6, UConn versus number 20, Maryland. They play at 1 o'clock my time, which by the time I release this, the game will probably already be started. Um... It'll be interesting to see how UConn performs with that Nika Mule and Azzy Fudd. If Maryland can play at the best that they can, they're going to win this game by a blowout. But if they're on that like that inconsistent downfall, it'll be a closer game. But I think Maryland's going to win this game no matter what. So as I wrote this down, I wrote these down before these games started. But number seven, Virginia Tech plays against USC Asheville today, in which right now I'm checking the game is just finishing, like, 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Um, Virginia Tech is winning by 40, 86 to 46. Um, they have one, two, three, four, five players in double digits. And one player, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, five players in double digits, which is impressive. T. Soul had 20, has 21 points and five rebounds. And E. Kitley has 20 points and 10 rebounds, so... And G. M. Moore has 10 points and 10 assists, so overall they played really, really well. And then number 8, North Carolina played against uh, Wofford, which this game finished. North Carolina was one point away from 100, but North Carolina won 99-67, to so they won by 32, doing this math on the go. <laughs> um, leading scores for them, K. Todd Williams had 20 points and 9 rebounds. E. Hodgson had 20 points and 6 assists. A. A. Utsby had 17 points and 12 rebounds. So, overall, they played well. And Wofford's actually 7-3 and three now. They play, they've been playing well. Um, we have number 10, Iowa State against unranked Jacksonville. Iowa State won this game by 34, 84-50. to 50. Um, Iowa State's leading performers, Ashley Jones, had 22 points and 10 rebounds. 
Then S. Source had 20 points and 8 rebounds. And after that, nobody got in double digits. That's surprising. Everybody scored. But you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 players played um, on the bench. So that was a lot of additional playing time for them. Excuse me real fast, guys. <coughs> My mouth is dry today. All right, we have uh, number 23, Oklahoma, play against Robert Morris, which... This game is just finishing. There's two. There's three minutes left in the fourth quarter, but Oklahoma is winning by thirty. Um, Oklahoma. Some of the leading scorers right now, as of this moment, was M. Williams with fifteen points. L. Scott and uh, A. Jones. <laughs> that's funny. Has fourteen points, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six players in double digits. That's impressive, right there. Later today. Uh, wait. Actually, just kidding. Going on right now is number one, South Carolina, playing against Liberty University. It's halftime currently, and South Carolina is winning by 20, 42 to 22. Pretty high-scoring game. Leading scorers right now for South Carolina is Zia Cook. And then after that, with 10 points, I'm sorry, Zia Cook with 10. And then we go to Aaliyah Boston with 6 points and 3 rebounds. Um, And then that's about it after that. Um, And then... Number eight, NC State, which is going on right now, is playing in South Florida. Currently a halftime. NC State's only winning by nine, so USF, uh, South Florida, is keeping it pretty close. For NC State right now, uh, I think it's Diamond Johnson. He's playing well. She's got 14 points. And then next up, you have M. Collins, who's got six points. Um, overall, playing uh, decently well. And then... We have number three, Ohio State. This game has not started yet. Number three, Ohio State plays against Michigan State at 2 o'clock. And then we have number 21, Arkansas, plays against Arkansas State, which, by the way, Arkansas is 11-0 right now. We'll see if they can continue the streak tonight. And then at 3 o'clock, by the way, this is all Arizona time, so if you're Eastern, it's two hours ahead, and if you're Pacific, it's one hour behind. Um, number 22, Gonzaga, plays against UC Davis. And then number 17, Oregon, plays against Oregon State later. All right, we're going to flip the kit page, and we're going to go on to some games later this week. We got some really good games uh, for some ranked teams. So on Wednesday, December 14th, number 15, Utah, plays against Colorado. This is going to be a good game because Colorado has been playing really well. I'm pretty sure they're 8-0 and right now. And Utah has been really impressive. I know Alyssa Pil- Palili, I think is how you say her last name, um, has been impressive. She's averaging somewhere the 20 points per game right now. Um, so that should be an exciting game. And then we have number 11, LSU, plays against Lamar. And number 12, Arizona, plays against Texas Southern. We go on to some games on Thursday, December 15th, which number 19, Baylor, plays against Tennessee State. Number one, South Carolina, plays against South Dakota State, which we'll see how South Dakota State plays after they... Oh, shoot, I just dropped my microphone. Um, We'll see how South Dakota State uh, plays after upsetting number 24, Kansas State, this week. Um, And then this game, it's two unranked teams, but this is going to be a good one. It's going to be Princeton against Rutgers. I know Rutgers was in contention for being ranked earlier in the season, um, and they've been playing well. And then, obviously, I spoke on Princeton earlier. Just NC State plays against Davidson. Number 17, Oregon versus uh, Eastern Washington. And one of the most exciting games of the week, in my opinion, is going to be number 13, UCLA versus USC. USC is right on the verge of being in the top 25. They're 9-0 and right now, and they've had some decent wins. And obviously, UCLA is playing really well right now also. And so I feel like this is going to be a good game. Again, that's on Thursday, December 15th. Make sure you watch that one. On Friday, December 16th, we have number 3, Ohio State, plays against Albany. And number 8, North Carolina, plays against South Carolina Upstate. And then an unranked game is Kansas versus Tulsa. Tulsa has uh, has a pretty good record this year. I can't remember it off the top of my head. And then obviously I spoke on Kansas earlier. They're playing really well right now. We go on to a couple games on Saturday, December 17th, in which I think is going to be a game of the week. It's number 18, Creighton 
plays against number 21, Arkansas, so that should be an amazing game. We have number 14, Michigan, plays against Appalachian State. Number 15, Utah, plays against UC Riverside. Number 13, UCLA, plays against Cal State Bakersfield, so UCLA has a quick turnaround. And then number 22, Gonzaga, plays against BYU. And lastly, number 11, plays LSU, plays against Montana State. So some pretty decent games this week. We'll see if there's any upsets that come out of it. I'm sure there will be one somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's what went over the games. I still have the leading scores and WNBA mock draft remaining. But first, the biggest news of the week is that Brittany Griner, she is finally free. She's back in the USA. So um, for those of you that don't know, which I'm pretty sure everybody knows at this point, but... Brittany Greiner was wrongfully detained in Russia. This has been a very sensitive uh, subject to talk about. But she's finally free after like 260-something days she was free. Um, and she's currently back in the U.S. There hasn't been many, many updates on her quite yet. Um, but I'm sure that there's going to be soon. Just there was one video that came out where she was on the plane back home. And she is now with her family. So... Sure, you guys will be seeing some news, uh, maybe some information about her later this week. But the WVA and the sports world in general is very happy to have her back, especially here in Arizona. So that is very big news that has broken off this week. And yeah, that was uh, that was amazing. So wanted to go over that before I go over the next thing. Uh, right now, I'm going to go over some of the leading scores that have been uh, really good for some of the teams going on. Start. I'm sorry, playing right now. Number one league scorer, and this is in NCAA Division One basketball, is Anissa Morrow. She plays for DePaul. She is a forward. She's averaging 28.5 points per game. Number two is Caitlin Clark from Iowa. She is a guard, and she is averaging 27.7 points per game right now, in which, not to include, she had like a 45-point performance, so that definitely brought her average up. Number three, Maddie Segrist for Villanova, who's a forward, is averaging 27.4 points per game, in which she's a quiet name nobody's talking about, which I don't understand, because she is playing so good for Villanova right now. Number four is Kishana Washington. She plays for Drexel University. She is a guard, and she's averaging 26.9 points per game, so she's been playing well. Number five, Ta- I don't know if it's Tanaya or Tanya, so I apologize now. But I'm going to say it's Tanaya Lots- Lotson. She plays for Florida State. She's averaging 24.6 points per game. I know she's a guard. I don't remember what year she is, but I remember seeing high school highlights, and she's so good. Number six is Dominique Davis for Southern Miss. She's averaging 23.1 points per game right now. She's a guard. Number seven is Angel Reese from LSU. She's a guard and forward. She plays everything. Averaging 23.1 points per game right now, not to include her, like, 14 rebounds, but she's the number one rebounder in the nation. Then, number eight, we have Beyonce Bay, who plays for Idaho. She's averaging 22.6 points per game. She's a guard. I haven't followed her at all. I'm going to have to start following her. Number nine is Lauren Park Lane for CN Hall. She's averaging 21.6 points per game. She is a guard. And number 10, Gabby Gregory for Kansas State. Like I said, she's been really consistent. Obviously, she's a guard, and she's averaging 21.2 points per game. And then there's many, many, many. I wanted to do, like, top 15, but there are so many people averaging, like, just around the 20s. I don't want to, like, leave anybody out. So I just went with the top 10, but... Lots of leading scorers this year. I'm interested to see how, at the end of the season, who the leading scorer is and what the number is at uh, points per game. Because it's tough to get up there and average more than, or to keep up with your average and either increase it, uh, keep it the same, or not decrease it at all. So that's interesting. Okay, now that I'm finished, well, kind of finish with women's college basketball because I'm still kind of on that topic. I'm going to go over to my WNBA mock draft. Um, I have mine written down, and then I also have the ones that ESPN put out, so I'm going to be doing the comparisons as well. So for the number one pick in the WNBA draft is the Indiana Fever. 
Um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this is going to be the number one pick, but it's Aaliyah Boston, uh, South Carolina. She's a forward. Obviously, she won state championship this year, last year, and there's a pretty good chance she's going to win state championship this year as well. Um, Aaliyah Boston has is just incredible in general. Um, plus, Indiana Fever need a big, so that's perfect. Just literally perfect for Indiana. The number, oh, and also ESPN has it as well. Ellie Boston going number one. Number two is Minnesota Lynx. Um, the top two are almost like guaranteed spots. Uh, it's going to be Haley Jones. Both myself and ESPN agree with that. Haley Jones plays for Stanford. She's a guard slash forward. She does a little bit of everything. She's a great shooter, can attack the basket. She plays incredible defense, and she's got some size to her as well. Um, She's a clutch player overall as well. A great rebounder, a great passer. I mean, she's just a great overall player. And although her stats might not show that she's averaging like the most points per game, most rebounds, most assists, she's always like right there. And plus, she does a lot of little things as well. All right, for number three pick, Atlanta Dream Have It. I personally think Diamond Miller from Maryland is gonna get there. She's a she's gonna get the number three pick. She is a guard slash forward. Diamond Miller, um, ESPN has her being the fourth pick. Um, I think she's going to be number three for Atlanta Dream because Diamond Miller, I mean, she could play forward and Atlanta Dream need like a small forward slash shooting guard. So she's right in that position right there. I think that's a perfect fit for her. And Diamond Miller has been impressive this year. She's definitely, I mean, I know coming into this year, she was a big name, but I feel like she's made an even bigger name for herself. She's one that has been uh, definitely increasing her name out there. I'm sorry, like putting her name out there, making it to where more people are talking about her. So I see her going up higher, and she's going to be number three. Number four pick is the Washington Mystics. I think it's going to be Charisma Osborne. She's from UCLA. She's a guard. She's averaging somewhere in the 20s right now, um, if not on the edge of it. ESPN has her being the number fifth pick. Uh, but I feel like she has done better than expected. Obviously, she's a smaller guard. Washington Mystics have, uh, some very, they have some bigs, um, but they don't really have any guards. I mean, I know they have Natasha Cloud, but outside of that, I mean, she's really their main guard. So I feel like Charisma Osborne bringing in a guard to feel, feed the ball to Shakira Austin and, uh, Landon Della Dawn. Um, I feel like that's a perfect fit for her. Number five pick is the Chicago Sky. I think it's going to be Rakea Jackson. She's from Tennessee. She's a forward. ESPN expects her to go number three, at least the last time they did the rankings. But I feel like she hasn't. Uh, she's definitely dropped. And then obviously Tennessee starting off being like ranked in the top five to not even being ranked now. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, to not even being ranked now. She's definitely hurt her name. Uh, I shouldn't say hurt her name, but she hasn't like... It hasn't helped herself uh, in the fact that her team's dropping and she uh, isn't being very consistent overall. So I have her as number five right now for the Chicago Sky, but I could potentially see her dropping a little bit more depending on if she like keeps uh, uh, depending on like how she plays from now on forward for Tennessee. All right, the number six pick uh, goes to the New York Liberty. I think it's going to be, I, I, I think it's Asia Blackwell. She's for, from Baylor. She's a guard slash forward. Um, ESPN expects her to be the seventh pick. I have her going number six because she could do a little bit of everything. I feel like that's a perfect fit for the Liberty. Um, Liberty tend to get like a lot of all-around players, players that could do a little bit of everything. I feel like she is, sub is somebody like that. Um, I, to be honest, have not followed her name very much, so I can't speak on her weaknesses and strengths, but I have her going number six. Number seventh pick is the, goes to the Indiana Fever again. I have J.C. Sheldon from Ohio State. She's a guard going to Indiana. Um, the reason I say so is because Indiana obviously get the number one pick, and we all know they're probably most likely going to pick Aaliyah Boston. So I don't think that they're going to want another forward after that. So I see them picking someone who's a guard who could play shooting guard. And Tracy Sheldon is a great shooter. And then obviously Ohio State being ranked number three right now. She's led her team um, 
she's one of the players that has led her team to success. And I feel like if Ohio State keeps her, keeps it up, uh, J.C. Sheldon could go even higher in the draft. Um, I don't think I said this before, but ESPN has J.C. Sheldon being picked ninth. Um, I'd say with Ohio State's so success overall and how she's been performing all around uh, has led her to increase higher. Number eight pick goes to the Atlanta Dream again, in which I have them taking Elizabeth Kitley from Virginia Tech. She's a center Obviously, Kitley, I've spoken on her earlier, but she has been, uh, she's been a brilliant performer so far this year. Um, ESPN has her going number eight, so obviously we agree on that fact. Atlanta Dream does need a big, especially if at number three, if they're going to pick Diamond Miller. Um, Overall, Atlanta Dream has good guards, but they don't have very good, like, uh, small forwards, power forwards, centers, so Elizabeth Kitley would be a, a perfect fit for them, for sure. Number nine pick is Seattle Storm. I have Jordan Horston from Tennessee going there. She's a guard slash forward. Um, ESPN has her going at number six, but I have her going ninth because, obviously, of Tennessee, I mean, I kind of just spoke about Tennessee, so I don't need to speak on that again. Oh my goodness, my microphone keeps on falling. Um, I don't need to speak on Tennessee again, but um, overall, I don't know Jordan Horson's game too much, but with being a guard slash forward, I know she's a good shooter, which is something you have to be in order to be on the Seattle Storm. Obviously, being there with like Jewel Lloyd, Brianna Stewart, uh, those superstars, when they, drive, they, when they drive, they get a lot of attention, so having kickout shooters definitely is beneficial for them, so I feel like that's why Jordan Horson would be a good fit, and she could play a little bit of everything. Number 10 pick is the Connecticut Sun. I have Maddie Williams from Oklahoma going there. She's a forward. Um, Connecticut Sun do need a smaller forward, and that's what Maddie Williams is, because they have Jonquil Jones and Brianna Jones and Alyssa Thomas, so they're stacked on forwards. Um, That's why I feel like they're in an interesting position, but Maddie Williams is a great shooter, and so I feel like if she could like be out extended on the outside wall in the game with some of those bigs, it could be very beneficial for her. And ESPN, they have Maddie Williams getting picked 11th. I have her getting picked 10th. I think she's going to do a little bit better, and Oklahoma only has one loss this season, um, and so they have, uh, they've been playing pretty well. Number 11th pick is the Dallas Wings. I think Ashley Jones is going to get picked there from Iowa State. She's a guard slash forward. Um, overall, ESPN has her getting picked 10th. Um, I personally think Ashley Jones is a, an amazing player. Don't get me wrong on this. But I feel like she has been dropping a little bit um, on her averages and how she's been performing. So... I see her getting picked 11th. I feel like she's similar almost to, like, last year, like a Nas Hillman, where she was really impressive, but, like, her senior year, she was kind of dropping a little bit. So she got picked later in the draft, I think, like, early second round. So if Ashley Jones, like, continues on what she's doing, I see her getting picked even lower. Um, But right now I have her getting picked 11th. Obviously, these are going to change based on um stuff throughout the year or throughout March Madness and everything. So, um, we'll have to see on that. But number 12 pick goes to the Minnesota Lynx. They get, wait, yeah, they get another pick. Um, I think Celeste Taylor from Duke is going to get picked there. She's a guard slash forward. ESPN agrees with me on this one. They have her getting picked number 12 as well. Celeste brings, like, an energy nobody else brings. Um, she's a similar player to Haley Jones, actually, which is exactly what Minnesota needs Somebody in between um, that could play both forward and guard. She's an amazing shooter. And her defense, man, it's outstanding. And I feel like that's something Minnesota always prides themselves on is defense. They always keep teams to lower points than, like, what they normally average. So that's why I see them taking both Haley Jones and Celeste Taylor. But, yes, that is all I had for you guys today. I feel like that was a lot of information. How much time was that? Oh my goodness, that was already 40 minutes? That's crazy. I didn't didn't even think that was that long. Um, But that's all I have for you guys today. Lots of information. Games coming up this week. 
Leading scores, WBA mock draft, obviously the amazing news from Brittany Griner and then player of the year contentions. I'm really excited to have a good week. I hope you guys have a great week as well. I know it's also almost Christmas time and for those of you still in school, it's almost Christmas break as well, which is exciting. So yes, I will keep you guys updated, probably another podcast throughout this week instead of next uh, week from now. So Stay tuned for that. I appreciate everybody coming on, and I'll see you guys next time.